I want to welcome to our Headset Sports Instagram Live to JT Sui. JT is the director of Football Ontario and also uh, recently published a book. And that's kind of where we'll focus a little bit more so than the, than the football piece. It's more about the new book on, uh, on greatness. And it's called Your Greatness. Mm -hmm. It's the first volume of it. Yeah. And um, anytime that we can talk about just greatness and going from good to great and, and all mm -hmm. those different sort of process pieces along the way, I'm in. Yeah. And, I, and I absolutely love it. So my friend, thank you for joining us today. And uh, we have people with us, right? So people who are joining us today, if you have questions for us or a comment or just even want to give us a clap or a wave or what's up, we have a comment area that you can add to it. So we'll be chatting along the way, but if we can join you guys and bring you guys in, we'll do so, but you're not forced to. We're going to be talking about various aspects as mentioned, mental skills and training inside and outside of sport. But if we can bring people in, uh, even better. How's that sound? Sounds like a plan, brother. Ready to roll. Yeah. And I want to start with the book because that's okay. kind of where our connection was at the very beginning yeah. and getting ready for today was the book. And one mm -hmm. person who works with me um, was found out about the book. They're like, mm -hmm. you got to get this guy on. And I'm like, okay, so let me see. And then it was about greatness, yeah. right? So first question for you mm -hmm. is what, what inspired you? Or what were some major moments in your life that lead you to writing this book? Yeah, I know. That's a great question, Peter. Uh, you know, one of the things I've, I've come to appreciate the last uh, few years is that idea of that Nelson Mandela quote, that I never lose, I either win or I learn. So why I share that with people is I, I've learned that everything has either been a win or a learning opportunity for me. So to sort of direct and hone in a little bit more on your question, I had a conversation with a client of mine who also happened to be a, a former teaching colleague and a former coaching colleague of mine. And he asked me after one of our group coaching sessions, you know, what's, what's your truth? And, you know, Peter, that, that really stopped me because I am someone who, I am one of the most curious people, you know, I always love asking questions, finding out what makes people tick, what drives them, what lights them up and all those great things. And it was probably one of the most thoughtful questions that anyone asked me. And in that process, I shared with him a simple truth. And the truth was that everyone has greatness inside of them. So, so from that one simple idea, sort of birthed this idea of a book. And I looked at it as, you know, we all have greatness inside of it. And that's just, that's one of my firm beliefs. And then my responsibility is to help others understand that greatness is inside of them. And I think everyone to a degree understands that like on a conscious level, <laughs> right? Like we, we say that. But what I really wanted to help people understand is that that greatness sometimes gets buried, right? It, it gets buried in our fast and busy hustle and grind mentality. But the truth of the matter is that your responsibility is to learn how to bring that greatness to the surface. So, so I, I wanted to share it in a way that was a very positive message. It was inspiring and it was empowering them and helping share that simple truth with more people. So that was the inspiration behind the book. I love it. I love it. And, and what resonated with me was towards the end of you answering the question was the how, right? Mm -hmm. And that part to me is so important. Mm -hmm. And everyone has their recipe to greatness. That's mm -hmm. kind of in my conversations with people. And when I'm on the other side of things, I'm like, I'm all about that recipe. Yeah. With that recipe, it's so helpful to have someone or a group of people to help you mm -hmm. understand the path with that recipe, but then also how to do it. Right. And I think that's so important. Are, are there any kind of in that in that path? Mm -hmm. It could be writing the book or your coaching, be it clients or coaching sport that someone was there anyone that showed you the kind of how that was a an influence in this yeah no that's a great question peter uh one of the firms and i know you've played at a high level you played hockey at a high level 
I'm a firm believer that everyone needs great coaches or mentors to pour into them. And why I believe it's so important is that really it, it's like you said, it's that taking action because inherently when you take action, you are inherently taking risk. Mm-hmm. So, so I'm a firm believer that you know, great coaches, great mentors, great teachers, whoever those, those, those people you look up to have, they pour into you their belief, right? Mm-hmm. Their word, their kind words, their words of, hey, keep going. And that gives us the courage, right, to take great action. So I've had numerous people throughout my life. And I would probably just say that in the last few years, what I have really learned is that all of those people, I've taken little pieces of great other great coaches, right? Like I think of high school teachers, high high school coaches. You know, I think of my coaches in university. Uh, I think one of the unique things about me during my coaching career, talking in terms of athletics, very often I was the youngest on the staff in terms of chronological age. Mm -hmm. So I've sort of had this blessing to always have this open mind, this curious mind, and always this willingness to learn from others and figure out how to do things, you know, better, more efficiently, more effectively. So uh, I would just say that this work is, um, is a beautiful baby of all, of all the great teachers and coaches and mentors I've had in my life. Yeah. And, and, and that, that curiosity piece, as you mentioned that, and this is outside of this conversation, right? So we've had a few conversations and mm-hmm. LinkedIn exchanges and emails, but I, I found that curiosity piece, mm-hmm. even in a short period of time, come out in you. Right. Like here, here's a question for, you. I'm going to add like, so the yeah. ones like maybe connect a couple here. Yes. Yeah. So we have this great curiosity. Yeah. But then we have the risk taking piece. Yeah. Right. So you could be a young dude on the staff. You could be the young athlete who mm-hmm. is um, on that team, but it could also be that, Hey, and I want to become an author and a coach. And mm-hmm. so it's, it's curiosity. And then there's, action taking and risk yep all right here's here's and maybe some people can leave with some nuggets here yeah give us like how do you put the curiosity piece Mm -hmm. into action the risk yeah no that's a great question and you know i I was thinking about your previous question about you know great coaches and mentors so i have a coach right who whatever you want to call them whether it's a a life coach right a business coach whatever and and he asked me once and it was during a, a group mastermind session mm-hmm. and there was something he shared there. And I just remember feeling this tidal wave of emotions, like literally brought me to tears, like brought up a lot of, I don't know whether it was a past experience. And after the call, he called me just one-on-one mm-hmm. and he says, what's up? And I, and I explained to him kind of what I was feeling. And he looked at me, dead in the eye, right through virtually. And he goes, stop trying to be so friggin' perfect. Mm. And then he smiled, right? Because I knew, again, a little bit of that love tough. Yeah. And he brought my guard down. And then he goes, let me ask you a question. When you're coaching football in a game, does every play go exactly like you've drawn up? No. So why do you expect that everything in your personal life, in your business life, is going to be perfect? And I remember just this light bulb moment went on and I was like, oh my gosh, like I am holding myself up to this illusion of perfection. And from that moment, it allowed me to embrace this idea of imperfection. Mm -hmm. So, so where I was going at with your question is it's, that's the action is, is learning that taking action, you're going to win or you're going to learn. And it's just stopping this idea that it has to be good or bad, positive or negative, right? Or it's, it's that it's just learning that it just is. And from taking action, you're going to, you're, you're going to create a win and you're going to learn something in the process. So I find like sort of learning to redefine that action is where the joy is. It's where, is, is where the peace comes from. That has really been the game changer for me, I would say in the last calendar year. 
wow. that I've really, truly learned to embody. Wow, wow. Uh, and just a, to a couple things on, on what you said, and, and this is just, I'm going to throw it out there, you don't yeah. know, or even anyone else, but um, in asking athletes, and to get back to my own athletic career years and years ago, yeah. when you think about your best performances, they come with struggle, right? They're never the, the perfect, like it's, if you're a goalie, it's not really the shutout unless you were challenged with like a lot of shots, right? Or that big win, over someone or a group, but it, it, it wasn't an easy victory. It wasn't a blowout, right? You come from behind. So I, I do not believe athletes or people who are performing would appreciate the wins without the struggle. Those are the best ones, mm -hmm. right? So I think that's kind of what you're saying. And, and I yeah. love this. And I don't know, I make connections in my own mind in our conversations yeah. offline, yeah. Uh, but there's, um, there's a sports psych in the States. His name is Jerry Lynch. Okay. And, um, and, and he writes just differently about sports psych, a little bit mm -hmm. more of that kind of Eastern sort of philosophy. Mm -hmm. And he calls, in one of his books, The Way of the Champion, he calls it being perfectly imperfect. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that, that, that is so awesome. Like that to me is, yeah, like you're, you're, you're going to fail, but that's the beauty. Yeah. And, and that's what you're saying is like, take action to learn, right? And, and that's and that's such a beautiful thing that uh, I, I think you live by your clients that you share wisdom with mm -hmm. inside of sport and out. But I, I really like that imperfection piece because yeah. even when we have whatever the perfect a perfect game or a shutout, if you're a goalie, it's not right. There's always something there to learn from, which I love. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and I, I spent one. I, this is a little bit more. Uh, a little more self-serving on my part, this one. I yeah. kind of want to let other people know, I think both of our joy in when we were younger in books, that like you wrote yeah. this book yeah. with a choose your own adventure focus. Mm -hmm. And I just want you to tell maybe the, the, the younger folk out there what, what that is and how that kind of led the path to, of the writing of this book. How? Yeah, no, that's a... That's a great question, Peter. And right now, like my curiosity is starting to go, yeah, why did I do that? Right? Just that <laughs> curious mind. Yeah. And I think it's from my own lived experience from education is that, again, not good or bad, but we are sort of programmed that things have to look a certain way, right? We, we, we are taught from a young age that you have one person that stands at the front of the room that, you know, they're going to pontificate to you. They're going to tell you what's important, right? You have a coach that is telling you, you need to do X, Y, and Z drills for it to do this. And so from that, again, not good or bad, it just is. What I've learned in this journey, right? Because I have been forced to confront a lot of my doubts, a lot of my worries, a lot of my insecurities, right? In many different areas of my life in this process away from education, that I've learned that one of the people we need to learn to trust the most is ourselves. Mm -hmm. And, and, I, and I find like the choose your own adventure was just an opportunity to, to encourage people to, to explore, right? Like how you're going to grow is by actually taking action and, and going on the journey. So I think it was kind of a cheeky way for me to kind of encourage people to sort of walk your own path. Like once you take one step, you know, if I'm giving walking in a dark room analogy, once you take a step in that dark room, then more of the room is going to be like, it's going to be revealed to you. Right. Same thing with walking there. So, so that was part of the reason was to encourage people to explore a little bit more, be okay with the discovery piece. And the other part of a lot of the work I do is helping people tap into those higher conscious faculties, just a real fancy way of saying their mental muscles, things mm -hmm. like their intuition and just learning how to sort of trust themselves more and having a ton of fun in the process. Yeah. 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 Love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and when I, when I, when I, when I was reading about your book and then you took this path, I'm like, Oh, I like it. Yeah. And, 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 and even that told you too, as a, as a, as a, as a young kid, uh, liking the, that format for young kids books. I don't even know if they're still around, but they used to be per, quite popular back in the day, but it's, yeah. it's, it's a guide but it allows you to go down various paths mm -hmm. and check out without there being really this, this outcome. It's just, here's what this path would mean to you. Here's what this path. So 
I really appreciate a book being written in that way that it allows you to, as you mentioned, explore, right? Step yeah. your foot in and, and to move forward, right? But then you can explore another one and, and move forward with it as well. Yeah. Hey, what would be, so, and, and again, I, I didn't give the full um, title of the book, but it's yeah. looking at greatness within 13 lessons for volume one. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the question I have, and again, <laughs> every day is different, always yeah. changing. Yeah. Which which one which one or ones of the thirteen lessons are you with others focusing on more so right now? That is a great question, Peter. And why I say it's a great question is when people reach out to me or share the book, one of the things I always ask them is what resonated with you? And what I have found from my experience by asking that question from a place of curiosity is that very often what people gravitate to is the messaging they need to hear. Mm. And it's almost like they're giving themselves permission to explore. Uh, I'll give you an example. I had a, a, a good friend who, also, who I played football with in university. And he's thinking about, you know, some different life changes, you know, going on a different career adventure. And the one that resonated with him was the chapter on like do the illogical and and the story again was all around this idea of you know myself choosing to walk away from the safe and comfortable world of education here in canada which is really it's it's you know you put in your 30 years you have a defined benefit pension it's, it's very safe and comfortable right and, and so it was interesting to see him go down that path i was chatting with a, a coaching colleague and the one that resonated with him was, was, the, cha was the chapter on belief. Mm. It was a story about my last year of coaching high school about how I tried to find an opportunity to really reinforce this belief. And the interesting part, which you would like is, you know, how that belief showed up in, in, in the most challenging, the, the biggest obstacles, the biggest adversity and all those lessons came out in those moments. So, so what I would share is I'm always fascinated that the chapters that resonate with people the most are always at these times where they're at crossroads in their life. Mm -hmm. So that's why I wrote it from a, a coaching perspective, a career perspective, a personal life, a relationship with my kids, my wife, because the story is just a way to sort of make them more aware and, and support them along their journey. And it's kind of interesting that a couple of things that you mentioned that resonated with me was just giving yourself permission, right? It's almost yeah. kind of like, the, and back to where we kind of started our, our conversation today was like taking that risk and, and trying to change behavior, that behavior change piece. But sometimes just giving yourself permission and then starting with something that resonates is so important, mm -hmm. right? And, and I mentioned earlier, this is you know, the headset and this is, a company that I have, we have an application, but why we created this was we didn't think that everyone went through mental skills training the same, right? It's not the same. And, and often in, in, in sports psychology, it's like, let's do this together, right? Let's do this mental skill and development together where sometimes it's, it's, it's the permission for that person to say, ah, oh, I like that. Let me start here. Or that sounds interesting. Let me start here and make it a little bit more specific to the person. And as you mm -hmm. mentioned, that means such a big thing, right? When you can feel that connection with something or someone or a word on the page or on your phone. And I think that's yeah. pretty darn important right there. Mm -hmm. um, it, focusing a little bit more on, on a little bit more on sport with this one yeah. Yeah. is now with with athletes and teams and what we're going through is there is there a mental skill that you think might be a little bit more valuable mm -hmm. these days i would say the answer is yes right because and this is where i'm a firm believer that positive thinking is a start Right. And it, it's really easy to be positive where, you know, the number on a scoreboard is, is you're perceived it's, it's in your favor. Right. You get a great mark on a test or, you know, there's you're crushing it at your job. Right. Like that's 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 easy. Anyone can do that. I feel right now 
we have this amazing opportunity because we all have the same 24 hours in a day. The lens at which you view it really will ultimately de determine what you experience from that. Mm -hmm. and, and what I mean by that is, again, it's not defining today as positive or negative, good or bad. It just is. I think one of the most powerful things we, emotions we can connect to is this idea of, and it's very, it's getting more popularized. It's this sense of gratitude. Mm. And, you know, it's not just me saying it, but if you take a look, which is one of my favorite books, Think and Grow Rich, you know, Napoleon Hill studied, you know, 25,000 great people, 500 of the world's most successful people. And he talked about this idea of some of the highest feelings, emotions we can experience around this idea of love, joy, and sex. And where, where I'm going with that is, what's, what is what is gratitude, really? I think gratitude is, is developing this sense of appreciation, of, of unconditional love, of, of gratitude, of feeling truly blessed for this gift we've been given, which is today. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I say is, again, gratitude, we can all think gratitude, but can we feel it like deep subconsciously? Mm -hmm. So one of my favorite things I'd like to remind myself right? Pra you know, doing my best to practice what I preach is this idea of count your blessings. It just feels better. Right? And, and, and where I would really challenge people to do is, you know, get up, you know, S just go for a walk and start challenging yourself to start rhyming off as many of the things you're grateful for. Maybe it's as simple as, hey, I'm grateful I have clean, drinkable water. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful I have strong, powerful muscles that help me move. I'm grateful that I have technology so I can have this beautiful conversation with Peter and just start rhyming it off. Yeah. And, and, and you'll quickly see within, you know, in studies have shown different things, like in as matter as like 68 seconds that you can literally shift what you're thinking about. And, and so I would say right now, that sense of gratitude, that deeper sense of blessing, right. And, and just acknowledging all the beautiful things in your life, I, I think is what we need to do more and, and what I'll say is because everything outside of us, you just observe what the news, all the doom and gloom, mm -hmm. what people are focused on, it's your responsibility, right? It's not other people's responsibility. It's not the media's responsibility to make you feel good. It's your responsibility. So I would say to people, gratitude, a sense of blessing, that's what we need more of in this it. world. I love it. Yeah, and, and, and years ago, I wouldn't have thought that would be a part of the work at least with athletes you know that gratitude and being grateful one of the greatest skills especially for resilience just to be able to kind of think about them and i would even say i, I tell people like and, and you have the book in front of you but it, it almost kind of felt early like a um, even like a, to have like a gratitude journal or a mm -hmm. journal where you and, and it could be part of your your every day it could be associated mm -hmm. to you in your sport but even outside it and and either putting in your phone, writing it down. And those are great reminders on that mindset piece, right? But that could be done when you're experiencing challenges or not. But I, I, I would have heard that years ago, go, what, <laughs> really? Yeah. And, and it would almost feel a little bit fluffy to me. Yeah. Where it's like, no, like, and then when you have the science piece, now, now we have some science, right, in regards to assessing individuals and groups and saying, well, no, there's an impact when you are grateful or experiencing gratitude. And you mentioned the emotions piece that athletes are kind of like, ah, right. I don't know if I, I, I should, but it's like, no, no, no. Like this is something that you need to do to be able to support your journey. But again, especially through those, through those challenging times. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Um, you got me thinking as you were kind of answering the question was like for, for, for this month, for, for us at, at headset, mm. we've kind of taken this, this new resolution goals at kind of the beginning of the year mm -hmm. and are focusing a little bit more on confidence and this belief, right? This confidence self efficacy. And I know one of the sort of ideas is about belief, right? So you have one, Again, for lack of better words, it's like, like a chapter, but it's an idea. It's a, it's a yeah. focus area. Mm -hmm. How do you build that belief? Mm -hmm. it's, it's easier said than done. And it's yeah. very fragile. Yeah. Well, you bring up a great point, right? Is, 
and this is where uh, I think I've learned in, in my process, specifically talking about, you know, business entrepreneurship. That's why I love working with athletes, you know, high quality athletes, coaches, teams, and organizations, because there's something about, like you said, that it's a daily practice, mm. right? You're not, you, you can't just practice gratitude once and say, well, okay, I'm done there, right? It's, it's like bathing. You got to do it every day. You got to brush your teeth every day. So it's kind of, you know, so I love the mental performance, um, what you were talking about. I have a firm belief, right? And, and again, I challenge, I know you work with a lot of athletes and coaches and teams and organizations, but there's only one way, right? And, and confidence is, there's two forms of confidence to me. We have this idea that you can fake it till you make it. To me, that is like terrible advice. It's, it's like awful. And, and why I say that is it doesn't work. Because as soon as adversity challenges, obstacles hit, if you're thinking you're going to fake it till you make it, the, the pressure, the stress of the situation is going to consume you. So, so we got to move away from that idea. Earned confidence is what we're after, right? Like true earned confidence that regardless of what's happening, regardless of what the scoreboard says, regardless if you're up by five, down by five, that's it. So to answer your question, there is only one way to do that. And that's through consistency. So it's consistent action, going back to what we talked about, right? Like taking focused and consistent action. And once you do it, right, you earn it through reps and sets. Yeah. Right? It's like in the gym, you get stronger by actually performing a squat. You can't watch YouTube videos on squats and, and you yourself get stronger. So consistency creates confidence, right? And earned confidence. Mm. And that confidence creates champions. And, and what I mean by that is that earned confidence, right? As I said, it's real easy to be confident when the scoreboard's in your favor, when you perceive you're playing well, when the person ahead of you, or when you feel, hey, I'm bigger, stronger, faster than that. But can you respond in the same way where you're down by five? You're going against someone that physically is bigger, stronger, faster than you, or, you know, you perceive you're in a slump. So that's where it goes. Like consistency creates confidence, confidence creates champions. I love it. I, I, I like that part. <laughs> what people take away is like, it's earned confidence. Everyone take that one away, earned confidence. Yeah. And, 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 I, and I just, to, to, it's, it's, it's very similar. It's just, it's, it's genuine belief, mm -hmm. right? And I've had so many people in an office or now the last couple of years online through different platforms that we can see someone, when you ask them, you know when it's genuine or not, mm -hmm. right? And it's tough. And, and that's an awesome experience to have with someone when they're not and you can work on it. Mm -hmm. But you know when mm -hmm. it's not. You can tell when someone isn't and you have to build it. Yeah. If you had to, we have a, a, a mental workout we call the bricks on the wall and you got to build it brick by brick from the bottom up, right? So and it's that repetition, but it's yeah. every single day. Hey, Peter, I'd love to add something to that earned confidence sure. piece. Hey, folks, and this is the one thing that I will share with you. Whenever you're striving for a goal, and, and a, like, let's talk about what the purpose of a goal is. Uh, the purpose of a goal is to stretch. So that, like, I feel scared every day because I know I'm challenging myself to stretch. So, so I want you to understand, like feeling scared, feeling whatever, does not mean that you're not confident. It just means that what is going to give you that confidence is the ability, you know, I, I give you a football analogy. The ability is, okay, I'm lined up against someone who is, who is bigger, stronger than faster with me. The only way to overcome that challenge, that obstacle, that setback is to, again, start picking up some momentum to take action, right foot, left foot, lower my shoulder, pump my knees and run through it. So, so the confidence gains when you learn to take action in spite of feeling discomfort and uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. And even to, to as your, your, what you're doing is normalize. I, I like it. Like, like you said, like yeah. this is something to take away, like you normalize it. Yeah. And I wouldn't have thought years ago, like I do now <laughs> through experience of, my own experiences listening to people is people who are high achievers 
those people who strive for greatness doubt more than any other person on earth mm -hmm. what they do better or significantly more than anyone else's cope. Mm -hmm. And I would have thought yeah. with, 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 without early on, uh, I would have thought even in my, my, my playing career, like he just has it or she just has yeah. it. They're just confident. I'm like, now I just tell people who are younger. No, I hear yeah. I have an app. I can't tell you who it is, but they doubt more than most people. They just figure out how to work with it. And I love that you said that because that's what yeah. they do. And, and I love that you're sharing that, Peter, right? And that's, a, that's been the amazing part of going this journey. The pros deal with the same. If you really strip it down, professional athletes deal with the same images around like self-image confidence that the littlest athletes grow from. And that's like a beauty. Now, are they at different stages of their journey? Absolutely. But it's interesting how confidence, self-image piece, it, 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 it challenges us all. It holds us back at all times. The only decision you gotta you gotta decide is: Am I willing to pay the price to take action to get uncomfortable so I can go to that next level? Yeah. Right. So I love it. Yeah. No, you're right on. And I think, and this is the beauty, <laughs> right? We started with like you and I can have this, having a coffee somewhere. Yeah. But now we're sharing it with others. And people, please, everyone, chime in on these these content pieces. But this might be something that someone takes away and goes, "Wow, like I didn't know that." Like they really do, and, and and that's okay, and I can learn how to cope too, and just in my own way, kind of thing, right? So yeah, hey, um, the and I've seen it a little bit more online, but maybe you can kind of explain it to me a little bit, and also others. You have um, a podcast that's called mm -hmm. The Huddle, correct? Yes. Okay, so and it's fairly new, or have you had it for a while? Yeah, so I started the first Friday in January of last year, so. First Friday, January 2021. So one year into it, lots of different episodes. Mm -hmm. But my question is, what did you, what have you learned on that side from interviewing, having conversations, <laughs> like yeah. which, which maybe has affected your, your own journey over the last year? <laughs> Great question, Peter. It goes back to the intention of the podcast. And when I first started this, right, it's been an amazing journey of talking. We just had our 65th episode last Friday. Nice. Success always leaves clues. Yeah. And, and it doesn't matter what sport it is. It doesn't matter what level of sport it is. The same lessons, the same ideas will help you succeed at the game of life. And, and what I've really learned is that's why high quality athletes have these fundamental core characteristics, these qualities that are so embedded with us, us from such a young age, whether on the, on the court, on the field, on the ice, that set us up to be great at the game of life. And as soon as we start to learn the idea that, and this is something I learned from one of my mentors, success is pretty simple. It's 95% mindset, 5% strategy. And I think we sort of been sold the other day, right? that's all strategy. No, 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 no. The same things that will make you successful on the ice are the same principles and, and characteristics that will make you successful in the classroom, in your relationships, in your health. And, it, and that's probably been the best, uh, biggest lesson. Success always leaves clues. Oh, I love that. I love that. <laughs> nice little segue into another question I had for you is yeah. there's a volume one on yeah. the book, right? So with the writing and publishing mm -hmm. and now the work that you're doing with athletes and people outside of sport in the huddle, mm -hmm. what, what clues have any clues been little nuggets, morsels been laying around that you got volume two on the go? Yes. So that's a great question. <laughs> it's interesting. You know, Peter, one of the things I, I've learned about myself in the process and, and here's the thing, folks, the things that I, ask my clients to the things that I, that I, the messages I preach are things that I've learned have worked for me because I've learned that the most effective leaders are always willing to practice, right? It's not about just practice what they preach. It's like they're willing to put in the reps and sets themselves, right? So I'm just sharing some of these ideas. So interestingly story, when I first released the book, this old programming of myself said, okay, what's next? Next book, start writing it. 
talk to the publisher, let's get it out. Mm -hmm. And I had to hit pause on myself and that's where the mental discipline came in. Mm. And I said, you know what? You are greatness volume one just came up. You need to share these ideas and these messages, these stories with more people now focus on this first. And then, you know, down the road, there'll be a time and place to, to, to share the next iteration of it. it. So, so why I just share that is putting out the book has been a great process in me. I love creation, but it's also understanding that I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be right now. I'm in a space where you are greatness. This version is the message the world needs to hear. And then going forward, there'll be, there, there will be some other um, creations coming out. I love it. I love it. So well (laughs) said. I love it. Um, With, with everything you got going on, any, uh, just even to give kind of, we'll let the, the people who are here and then we'll post it in, in other social media links too. So yeah. um, where can they find the book, podcast, other stuff that you have going on? Any key kind of sites or places to go to that's easy for them to find? Yeah, so I would probably say, depending on where they're watching this, like if obviously a lot of people are watching on IG right now, I would say you can follow it. It's at underscore J is in Jimmy, T is in Tommy, underscore, T is in Tommy, S is in Sam, U is in Unicorn, I is in Ice Cream, so it's just my name. And from there, um, you can start to get a sense of, you know, the messages I share, you know, in terms of, you know, what I'm all about. And then from there, there's a link tree on my bio where you can access the Facebook community, the podcast, you know, if, you, if you're ready to take a next step and you want to have a deeper conversation, great. There's also a free PDF for seven questions to get unstuck. So, um, yeah, I would just say follow on one of them and then you can see if it resonates with you. Awesome. Awesome. And we'll, we'll post those as well. And mm-hmm. you were kind enough and we'll, it's going to be at a later time, but to give us a copy to send out to our community. Right. So yeah, that will happen. We'll post it on our, our various, um, our various, uh, social media links. And thank you for that. I really appreciate it. And then, people can kind of have the opportunity to, to connect. So we'll, 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 we'll launch a few of those uh, messages out there as well. Awesome. Hey, any, uh, we haven't had much in regards to the, the crew that's with us, the group that's yeah. with us. Are there any questions? Kind of we'll pause for, for, for just a second. We're going to wrap things up pretty soon too. But any, any questions from our, from our group for JT? All right, I, I have I, one, one last one, one from, from me. Okay. So you mentioned that mental skills training or being purposeful is important. Mm-hmm. Any kind of, for, for those who are, are, are about to start it, any, any thoughts before we go? Like any action pieces or, or, or next steps for people that they might be able to kind of take on? Yeah, I would say, and, and I, and I shared someone in my network shared this yesterday and just reminded me of this idea. Surround yourself with people that are positive, people that are inspiring, people that are empowering. And you know what? Very often people that are achieving greater results than you. And again, it's not good or bad, but what I have just come to learn is when you choose to surround yourself around greatness, it's going to challenge you to level up. It's going to, it's going to pull something out of you that you didn't even know was possible. And you just think of a great coach, right? Like I I remember having a coach in university say, you know what, if a coach is getting on you, if he's, if he's pushing you to say, Hey, you can do better. That's a great sign. He it's, they're challenging you because he knows you can go to the next level. Be mindful and be aware if they stop talking to you mm-hmm. because that's where they feel like you've hit your ceiling. You know, they, they don't expect that you have another level to get to. So my whole thing is we live in a world that wants us to just hang around people that look the same, that dress the same, that think the same. Choose to surround yourself with diversity of thought and, and come from that curious mind and just yeah. learn more about people. And, and I find with that skill, 
the one skill you'll learn from that is how to be more empathetic, to, to see the world through a lens that's different than yours. And in today's age, I think that that is a superpower that will set you up to be great in the game of life. Awesome. So that would be my bit of advice. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so okay. much. <laughs> yeah, this is this was this was wonderful. This was wonderful. You know, and, and just even in, in just the online art connection and now face it like through Instagram. It's it, it's been it's been a pleasure, right? Just kind of getting ready for this and talking to you. And the hope is that we'll have, uh, you know, future conversations is just mm -hmm. as you mentioned earlier, just being in the moment and enjoying the conversation with someone mm -hmm. um, is a blessing, right? Yeah. So I'm grateful that you came on. I'm sure even though they didn't mention it, we got a little, little message here that's, you know, a little bit of love here and some, some hearts coming up. I think there's a lot of gratitude there and appreciation. So mm -hmm. you taking your time on your Monday um, to support us and through our journey means, means the world to me and to, um, to people in our community. So that's thank great. you. I really no appreciate it. Hey, brother, can I, can I offer one more challenge to yes, people who are watching this? Yeah. Hey, what, whether you're watching live, whether you're watching the replay, here's my challenge to you. Is, is, you know, this conversation is about helping make people more aware. So if, you, if this resonated with you, share it with someone. Mm -hmm. Because the more people we have around these ideas, these simple ideas, the world's going to become more positive. It's going to become more inspiring and more empowering. And, and what we need to do is we need to come together and give us a greater sense of hope because the world needs it now more than ever. So I challenge you to go share this conversation with someone.